So if your uh, camera is plugged into your computer, you'll need to find the imaging software. It's called LC Micro. Come down here uh, to the Start menu and type in LC Micro. Now I've only got one LC Micro on my computer, but you'll have two. One of them will be LC Micro Stereo, and that will be for the stereo dissecting microscope that you're using in the first crack. The other one will be LC Micro CX Comp. And the Comp stands, stands for Compound Microscope. They're two different programs and they're calibrated slightly differently, so make sure you get it right, um, otherwise, you're going to have to shut down the program um, after you've taken some images, and that's a real pain. So, um, LC Micro um, looks something like this. What you will need to do is uh, press on one of these image boxes and <clears throat> go to live view which is this um, video camera right here press that and that's what's coming through our microscope at the moment um, it's a bit blurry but that's okay I'll show you how to uh, what happens there um, to actually acquire an image um, you need to press this um, just standard camera here, so take a snapshot. And once you've done that, you'll see the image come up in the viewfinder here. Uh, if you want to take a second image, you don't think that one's so good, but you don't want to throw it away yet, just click on the image 2 thumbnail uh, and go through the same procedure. Hit the um, live view button, which is the video camera, um, and I'm just going to, so see I'm changing the focus there comes in and out of focus. I might just sharpen that up, see if I can get it. So that's pretty good. Uh, and hit the camera button there. Okay, now we've got a second image, and that's a good image, I think. Um, as soon as you've got an image, you want to tell the program what magnification you're using. The program can't see your microscope. It doesn't know what objective lenses you're looking at, it doesn't know what magnification you're using. So, to do that, go to Image, Set Magnification. Um, and I've already set it to the one that I'm using, 20, or uh, it might be 10 or 2, and of course you might change um, depending um, on what image you're meant to be taking. So you're probably changing the magnification all the time, you're going to have to tell the program after each, um, each time you change the magnification. It's really important. So, um, that's okay. Um, this is uh, the magnification here, just a scale bar just sitting in the image. But if you want it on, actually on your image, you're going to have to burn it. Uh, so it goes into the image permanently. So burn into image. Um, you can see there's two scale bars there. One's just uh, um, sitting over the top, but the, the one behind is actually burnt into the image. And you can actually see it here on the thumbnail, burnt into that thumbnail. Um, really important is to save as you go. Um, a lot of people don't save and they end up with a computer crash or something and um, yeah, they lose all their images. So um, try and save as you go. Now, to get that into OneNote, you can import it from that save, save file, or I find it's really easy just to go to the thumbnail and right mouse click, copy, bring up OneNote, um, where are we? Here we go, paste it in here. Uh, right click and paste. Think about it for a second, and there's your image right there. Um, that's fairly straightforward. Um, the next thing that you want to do is really important is to make this image large. As markers, um, when we get your document to mark, it actually shrinks quite a distance. So um, to see the detail in the photos that you've taken, try and make all of them as wide as the document. Okay, so now I've got an image in, um, and we should go about. Um, annotating it. So uh, what you should do is highlight the important parts. What we're going to do is uh, draw. So we'll use um, the draw under the draw facility. We'll use straight lines um, and 
no arrowheads, absolutely no arrowheads. So choose this straight line, and I'm just going to highlight uh, that purple blobby bit there, um, and maybe I'll highlight another one. Oops, that's no good. Let's go back. Um, we want another straight line. There we go. So a couple of purple blobby bits. Now, to um, add a word to that, OneNote's really easy. All you've got to do is um, press outside of anywhere and start writing. Work, did it? Find an area up here. There we go. Um, purple blob bits. Two B's in a wobby? Let's go with two B's. Um, you can change the fonts. Um, I'd go black and I'd go um, reasonably large. Font size, and then you can drag that window in. And just line it up next to the thing that you're indicating. There we go. Hey presto, purple blobby bit. Um, make the try and make everything um, nice and dark, or at least contrasting to your image, so your marker will be able to see it. And make the words nice and large, um, that way we can see it as well, and um, we can give you the marks. Because if we can't see detail on your image, we can't mark it, right? Okay, what's next? Um, oh, we need a legend, of course. Um, there always needs to be a figure legend with images that you put in. So, figure um, one. Um, low magnification image of um, So, um, don't worry if you don't understand most of those words, um, but I can tell you now that that is an organism name, so it needs to be in italics, and that also is an organism name, so it needs to be in italics as well. Okay, so um, a lot of people have troubles with figure legends. Um, it's something that you've just got to practice. Um, <clears throat> I'd recommend thinking about the conversation you have with your mum or your dad, um, telling them exactly what this image is about. Because if, if you showed them this image, they'd see purple, they'd see red, and that would be about it. But um, if you want to explain the image to them, then you should be go into a little more detail. 